With Siyat HaDashmai, we're going to learn Shabbos Tav Mem Vov. We're going to start eight lines from the top of the Omud. We saw in the previous sugya that Rabbi Yechnon holds like Rabbi Yehuda, that there is Mukta and not like Rabbi Shimon, who does not hold of most cases of Mukta. Says the Gemara, Umi Omar Rabbi Yechnon Hachi. Can Rabbi Yechnon really hold this way, that the Halacha is like Rabbi Yehuda with Mukta? We know that there's a rule, Rabbi Yechanan says, that whenever you have a Stam Mishnah, that's a Mishnah which does not tell us the name of which Tana is saying it, then the Halacha is like that Mishnah, Utnan, and we have a Stam Mishnah in Maseches Kalim, and we discussed it at length on Daf Mem Dalad Omad Beis, discussing a Muchni Shelo Bizman Sheinish Metes, a type of coach where the wheels are actually detachable wheels they're not fixed they're not connected in a permanent way then there's a number of halakhic ramifications of the fact that the wheels are not an integral and permanent part of the coach and we saw this four halachas and i'm sure you all remember from daf mem daladom and base the details we'll just read it here again that muchni shelo the wheels of this coach bismanshi nishmetes when they are detachable they're not called a single unit with the coach. When measuring whether it's called our boy saw, whether it's big enough to be called not a kli, if it's too big to be called a kli, it does not become tomei. We know that a kli that's too big, then if a <coughs> if it hovers over a dead person then it does not become Tomei. And since these wheels are detached, then the wheels will become Tomei. And when there were coins, when there are coins on this wheel, then if the wheels would be permanent, we would say that since the main part of the coach does not have any coins on, you can move it, even if there's coins on the wheel. But if the wheel are, so to speak, an entity of their own, if there are coins on it, you're not allowed to move it on Shabbos. Ha eino leomois, but in the event that there are no coins on the wheel, Sharia, then you're allowed to move the coach and the wheels will move with it. Afal gavda havu aleo bebein ashmoshes. We're assuming that the way to read the Mishnah is that if there's no coins on the wheel now, you're allowed to move it. Even though there were coins on the wheel when Ben Ashmoshes, when Shabbos came in. And this is a Stam Mishnah that says that you're allowed to move it. Even though there were coins on the wheel during Ben Ashmoshes, that's only Reb Shimon. And since it's a Stam Mishnah, Reb Yechon and Paskins like that, this seems that he Paskins like Reb Shimon, not like Reb Yehuda. Says the Gemara, no. Omer Reb Zeira, Tehei Mishnah Seinu, Shiloi Hoyu Oleo Mois, when it says that it doesn't mean there are no coins on it now on Shabbos, even though there were coins on it during Ben Ashmoshes. No, it means if there were no coins on it during Ben Ashmoshes. And that's what the Mishnah sees, say, means. If there were no coins on it during Ben Ashmoshes, then you're allowed to move it at any point during Shabbos, providing there's no coins on it at that point. And even though this is not so fluent in the Mishnah, the Mishnah seems to be saying that it depends on whether there are coins on it now, but even if there were coins on it during Ben Ashmoshes, it would not be Mukta. And here we're twisting it a little bit and saying that it's talking about that there were no coins on it during Ben Ashmoshes. In order not to have a contradiction with Rabbi Eichnon, that on one place he says that Aloha is like a Stam Mishnah, which would mean that Rabbi Eichnon Paskins like this Mishnah, and elsewhere we see it in the previous Sugi, Rabbi Eichnon Paskins like Rabbi Yehuda, in order not to get confused and have a contradiction, we would rather explain the Mishnah a little bit, not the way it seems initially. And the Mishnah is only saying that if there were no coins there during Ben Ashmoshes, then one is allowed to move it during the rest of Shabbos. Continues the Gemara. Omar Bishua ben Levi. Pam achas halach Rebi le diuspera. Rebi went to a place called Yuspera. Vahira, and he ruled as follows. Bimunaira kurib shimoin ben the, he said these few words, that the halacha is by a menorah, like Reb Shimon, b'neir. 
So Menoira is talking about a lantern. We discussed a Menoira in the previous sugya, and the halacha is like Rab Shimon ben And we know that Rab Shimon holds that a neir, provided that it's not lit now, it's not muktza. And the Chachomim had a discussion. What did Rebbe actually mean? He said four words. What does that mean? Is that one ruling or two rulings? Iboyeluhu, they asked. Did Rebbe mean that the halacha by Menoira is like Reb Shimon by Neir, and we know that Reb Shimon by Neir says that there's no mukta, it's mutter? Or Idilmo, maybe no. Rebbe said two rulings. He gave a halacha, a psak by Menoira. What's the masuk psak by Menoira? Leisura. Or Kurup Shimon Benair, he also paskened regarding the Nair, that Loch is like Rup Shimon, Lehatera. Teiku, the Gemara says we have to let that stand. We have no way of knowing exactly what Rebbe meant. Continues the Gemara. Rev Malchia Iklo Lebei Rev Simloi. Rev Malchia was visiting the home of Rabbi Simloi with Tiltail Shraga. And he moved a Menorah, he moved a lamp. Ve Rev Simloi. Reb Malchia obviously ruled like Reb Shimon. Reb Simloi, who was the owner of the home, who ruled like Reb Yehuda. And he, he, Reb Simloi was makbid. He wasn't happy with the fact that Reb Malchia, he ruled like Reb Shimon in his own home. If, since him being the master of the home, the owner of the home, ruled like Reb Yehuda. Continues the Gemara. Reb Yaisi Glila, Reb Yaisi from the Golil. He didn't come to the home of Rabbi Yisib Arab Khanina. He came to the town or the city, the place of Rabbi Yisib Arab Khanina. Tiltil Shraga, and he moved a lamp, which only according to Rabbi Shimon is muta, according to Rabbi Yehuda it's mukta. And Rabbi Yisib Khanina was not happy with the fact that he moved it, since Rabbi Yisib Arab Khanina was the was the rav in that town in that place and he held like rabbi yehuda and he expected rabbi yisi glila to respect his psak continues the gemara rebavok ikla l'asri de bishua ben levi when rebavok came to visit the place of rabbi shua ben levi have a metal tel shraga <coughs> he would move a lamp like rabbi shimon ki ikla l'asri de b'yechanon when he came to the place of rabbi yechanon love a metal tel shraga he did not move a lamp like rabbi yehuda Asks the Gemara Monavshech, make up your mind. If you rule like Rabbi Yehuda that it's Mukta, Le'evit Rabbi Yehuda. Then even if you're in the place of Rabbi Shua ben Levi, you should still rule like Rabbi Yehuda. It's Mukta. How can you touch it? And if you rule like Rabbi Shimon that it's not Mukta, Le'evit Rabbi Shimon. Then even in the place of, of Rabbi Yechanon, you should still say it's not Mukta. I rule like Rabbi Shimon. Says the Gemara, no. He held the Mi'ikra din according to the letter of the law, the Allah is like Rabbi Shimon, there's no Mukta. Because of the covet of Rabbi Yechanon, who did I have of it? He did not want to touch something which Rabbi Yechanon held was Mukta, because Rabbi Yechanon ruled like Rabbi Yehuda. So in the place of Rabbi Yechanon, he respected Rabbi Yechanon's psak and did not touch the things that Rabbi Yechanon held were Mukta. Continues the Gemara. Oma Rabbi Yehuda. Omar of Yehuda. Shraga de Mishcha Shari Letaltala. A lamp that's not lit with with petrol or with some very bad smelling oils. It's lit with regular oil. It does not become moos. Then even though according to Shimon, whilst it's lit, you're not allowed to move it, as we've seen previously. Once the lamp gets extinguished, you're allowed to move it. It's not moos, it's not mukta. And therefore, shari little tula, it's mutter to move it. The nefta. However, if the oil that's used is, is a type of gas, a type of, of something which has very got bad smell, also little tula, you're not allowed to move it. It's mukta because it's moos. It's repugnant and therefore, either, even according to Reb Shimon, no one would use it for anything besides for lighting a lamp with it. And since you cannot light a lamp on Shabbos, even according to Reb Shimon, it will be Mukta. Rabbi of Rabbi Yosef to Omri Tarvayu, Rabbi of Yosef argued with Rav Yehuda and held the nefta namishari, even this lamp that's lit with neft, which has a bad smell, it's muta little tula to carry it, to move it. 
And we'll soon see why. It's the Gemara here in brackets, but really comes from later, because this lamp can be used to cover, to be a lid for other vessels, and therefore, even a corn chip shimon, even though it's got a bad odor, a bad smell, nonetheless, it's not mukta. Continues the Gemara. Reb Avya Iklo Lebe Rava. Reb Avya was visiting Rava. Have a meison beikare betina. His shoes were dirty with, with tit, with dirt. Asive apurio kamei Rava. He put his dirty shoes onto the bed in front of Rava. Ikpid Rava. Rava was not happy about that. Boya litzure. He decided to challenge Rab Avya. Nachsam Saifa explains that this challenge was supposed to lead itself into a place where Rab Avya would have to agree that he could have and possibly should have cleaned his shoes, even though it was Shabbos. Omarle. My tama Rabbi Rab Yasef de Omr Tarvayu Shraga de Nefto Nami Shari Little Tule. He asked him, Reb. Um, Rava asked Rabbi Avya, why is it that according to Rabbi and Rabbi Yosef that we just saw in the Gemara now, that according to Rabbi Shimon, the, a lamp that's lit with neft is not mukta? Omer Hoyel v'chazya l'chasuye be'mona. I'll tell you why. Because this lamp, even though you wouldn't use it as anything, the inside of this kli, the vessel is made to only be a lamp. You wouldn't use it to drink from it because it's moles, it's repugnant. However, you can use it to cover another vessel with it. So, so Rava asked him, Are you going to say that any pebble, any stone in the yard, you can use it to put it on top of a vessel and therefore it shouldn't be mukta? Of course it's mukta. The fact that you can cover a vessel with it should not take away the is of mukta. Unlike a stone, the stones do not have the the tzura, they do not have the form, they don't look like kalim, they're not vessels, and therefore they are mukta. However, this lamp, it's a kli, and it's a kli that has a use to cover another vessel, therefore it's not mukta. <coughs> and Rub Avia is going to bring proof to this. Milo Tanya, did we not learn in the Braisa? Hashirim, which are the bracelets, vanazomim, and nose rings, vatabois, and other rings, harehen kechola kelim, hanitolim bechotza. Even though the chachomim did not allow the women to go out with this into the streets, they might take them off, they might carry them. However, as long as you're not wearing them when you're going out, you're allowed to carry them in a chotza. Chotza is a place that you're allowed to carry. You're allowed to carry them, they are not mukta. Va'oma ula. Ula explains why they're not mukta. Matam, hoil ve'ikatoyras kliolea. Since they have the, the shape, the form of something of a vessel or of a, an object, an, a normal item, it's not just a stone, an inanimate object, <coughs> and therefore it's not mukta. Hachanami hoil ve'ikatoyras kliol le'or ba'avya says, so too, the, this lamp, even though it's regularly lit with neft, which is a bad smell, nonetheless it's a kli, and since toyras kliol le'or, and you can use it to cover another kli with it, Therefore, it's not mukta. And the Chassam Sefer explains that Rava was hoping, Rava himself was not aware of this b'risa, and he was hoping that Rab Avya would explain, saying that Rava himself, on Davkuf Nun Dalad Amad base, held that one would have been allowed to clean one's shoes, and therefore Rava was hoping Rab Avya would make reference to that, and then Rava would be able to say to him, so why didn't you clean your shoes before coming in? Why do you put them on my bed? when they're dirty. But Rab Avya answered this b'risa and he explained that the difference between regular stones and this lamp is that it has toiras kli oleo and brought proof from this b'risa that Rav himself was not aware of. And the Gemara now says, Omer of Nachman by Yitzchok, Brich Rachmona, have to thank Hashem, the Ksifei Rav Rab Avya, that Rav did not manage to embarrass Rab Avya. Continues the Gemara, Romi le Abaye le Rabba. Abai is going to ask Rabba an apparent contradiction. Tanya, we learned in Abraisa, Moisara Shemen Shebaneir, the leftover oil in a lamp after it's been extinguished, after it's gone out, Vashabakara, or part or any of the oil that's dripped into the bowl under the lamp when it was lit on Shabbos. Osur, one is not allowed to use it or have, you're not allowed to move it on Shabbos. It's Mukta. 
Reb Shimon Matir, as we've learned in this parak, Reb Shimon does not hold its mukta, and as soon as the lamp is extinguished, he can take the oil. Alma, le Reb Shimon lesle mukta. So you see, it seems from this brisa, Reb Shimon does not hold of mukta. Uraminu, and this seems to contradict a different brisa. The brisa says Reb Shimon Oimir, kol she'ein mumoy nikur me'er of yontav, ein so, in order to understand this, we have to know, there's a mitzvah, a chiyuv, called b'choyr. The firstborn kosher animal from, from its mother is a b'choyr and has to be brought to the Beis Hamikdash as a korban. If the korban gets a mum, a type of blemish that's not healable, that's not going to be healed ever, only then is one allowed to shech the b'choyr and eat it. And the same applies nowadays, even though we do not take it to the Beis Amigdash, an animal that has Kedushas Bechayr is not allowed to be shechted unless it, it receives a mum that's not going to be healed. And only an expert in mumin, in blemishes, is allowed to determine whether an animal has such a type of blemish and can be shechted or not. So the Brisa says that Kol she'ein mumoy nikr me'erev yontav This Bechayr <clears throat> if the blemish that it has that is questionable and needs an expert to determine that one can shecht it, if it did not have such a mum and it wasn't easily discernible and noticeable before the onset of Yom Tov that it had such a mum, then even if on Yom Tov it would receive such a mum, then Ein Zemin Amuchon, it's Muktza, you're not allowed to, even if you bring an expert, you're not allowed to shecht it on Yom Tov, it's Muktza. And this is Reb Shimon. So here Reb Shimon says that if it had a blemish before Yontav and you already had in your mind, I'm going to call the expert and the expert may say I can shecht it, it's not mukta. But in the event that the Ein Mumoy Nikar Erev Yontav, then in your mind, this was a regular Bechayr and you had no intentions of shechting it. It's mukta. So even if it has such a mum and you call an expert over Yontav, you're not allowed to shecht it, it's mukta. Ein Zemin HaMuchan. So this seems to contradict the brisa we saw before that Rabbi Shimon says there's no such thing as muktza. Says the Gemara no hochi hashta. I'll explain to you the difference. Hasam odom yeshevu matzape emosayt chabe neiroi. Regarding a lamp, everyone knows the lamp is going to extinguish itself at some point, and the person is just waiting for the lamp to extinguish itself, and then he can take the oil. So right from the start, in his mind, he knew that the oil was only going to be lit for a certain amount of time, and the rest of the oil he had in his mind that he was going to use it. But in the case of the Bechayr, is a person sitting and waiting for this Bechayr to have a blemish? A person is certainly saying to himself, who says there will be a blemish to this animal? And even in the event that some blemish does happen to it, who says it's going to be a permanent type of blemish? Maybe it will be a healable type of blemish, in which case it would not allow us to shecht it. Even in the event that a permanent blemish is going to happen to this animal, who says that a, a chacham is going to be prepared over Yontav to get involved with it and to give that ruling that you can shecht it, and therefore, even according to Reb Shimon, a person has it cut totally out of his mind to the idea of shechting a Bechayr on, on Yom Tov, unless it has a mum before Yom Tov, and then the person is already geared up for the possibility that the expert will say you can shecht it. But otherwise, it's completely muktza. Not like the lamp, where a person right from the beginning knows there's a good chance that the oil will be left over, I'll be able to use it. Continues the Gemara, Mosiv Romi Bar Choma. Romi Bar Choma asked the following question. We know that when, when a woman makes a neder, <coughs> the husband can undo it, and that's called Haforas Haneder. Mefirin Nedorin Bashabas. If a woman makes a neder, for example, she's not going to eat on Shabbos, and her husband is allowed to, on the day that he hears about the neder, he's allowed to be Mefir, he can undo the neder, he's allowed to undo it on Shabbos. And 
And besides for a husband being able to undo a nether, a chocham can also undo a nether. And a nether, which is the Tzayruch Shabbos, for example, if a person made a nether, he was not going to eat on Shabbos, he can go to the Rav and do Hatoras Nedorim and undo the nether. On Shabbos, asks the Gemara of Amai, why do, if this woman, for example, said she's not going to eat, then in her mind, food was out of touch. She's not going to eat this food. So food for her should be mukta. And are, are you going to say, well, the husband could be matir the neder, and then, and then she can eat on Shabbos, and therefore it's not mukta? No. According to what we just said now, that even according to Reb Shimon, a person will will not take it for granted that people will be there to to help him. In that, in the case of Reb Shimon, it was there won't be an expert there to say that the bechayr is allowed to be shechted. In our case, maybe her husband won't be there or will not want to be matter of the neder. But am I lema? Is this woman not saying to herself? Maybe my husband won't get involved and won't be Mati the Neder. So in her mind, food is out of out of range. So even if the husband is Mati the Neder, why is she allowed to touch the food? Says the Gemara, no. Hosam could have Pinchas Mishmei the Rava. The Omer of Pinchas Mishmei the Rava. Kol Hanoideres Aldas Baalohinoideres. A woman, every time she makes a Neder, she has in mind that this is. Com- permitting or is his husband permitting if the husband is not undoing the nether then the nether will be valid but she knows very well that her husband could come hear about the nether and be made for the nether straight away and therefore even in her mind she assumes or she she entertains the idea that it could be she will be able to eat the food on shabbos toshima the Gemara continues to ask, we just saw in this b'risa, Nish'olim l'nedorim shel tzayrich ha-shabbos b'shabbos. One is allowed to go to a rav and be matir neder <coughs> in order to be able to eat on Shabbos. Va'amai, according to what we said before, that a person would say to himself, maybe the expert won't want to get involved, leima miyema demizdakik leichachem. Here too, maybe the chacham will not want to be matin neder on Shabbos, and therefore the food that he was made a neder about should be muktzah, even if the chacham is going to be matir. In his mind, on the onset of Shabbos, he was not going to go anywhere near the food. Says the Gemara, no, it's different. In the case of the neder, even if a chacham will not want to get involved, so you won't have a chacham, you'll go to three simple people, even if it's not a chacham, and they can also be matir the neder in the same way as a single chacham can be matir a neder. Hacha, but in the case of bechayr, miyema demizdakik lechacham. In the case of bechayr, only an expert can determine and rule that this is a blemish that is fixed and you can shech the bechayr. And if the chacham doesn't want to get involved, you cannot go to three people who are not experts. And therefore, only in that case, the, the idea that a chacham may not want to get involved is enough to make a mukta. Continues the Gemara. Romi le Abaye le Rav Yosef. Abaye is asking a contradiction, a question to Rav Yosef. Mi Omar Rav Shimon, kov som muta le taltolo, we saw on daf mem dalad omad alaf in a brisa, that according to Rav Shimon, a lamp after it's been extinguished is not mukta, and you're allowed to move it. Kovso in, but that's only after it's extinguished. Loi kovso, but whilst the lamp is still alight, loi, one is not allowed to move the lamp. Even if Shimon agrees, you're not allowed to move the lamp. My tama, why not? Dilma bahadi denoketlo, we're afraid that whilst you're going to move it, kovso, it's going to get extinguished, and kibui, extinguishing a flame, is severely also on Shabbos. Asks, Ab- asks Abayat of Yosef, Shimon, but did, is there not another quote from Rab Shimon the Omar that says, Dovo she'ein miskaven mutter, that if you do a malocha without intentionally doing it, it's mutter, even if the lamp will get extinguished by mistake whilst you move it, he didn't intend to extinguish the lamp, and therefore it should be mutter. If so, why are you not allowed to move a lamp according to Rab Shimon, even when it's a light? The Tanya, we saw in the Bryce, Rab Shimon Oimir, Goyer Odom Kisei Mitov a person is allowed to drag a chair, a bed, or a bench, or Bilvachelo Yiskavin Lasis Choritz, even though you're digging 
a little ditch in the land, as long as you're not intending to dig, to plough the land, you're allowed to do it on Shabbos. Why? Because it's a Dovo She'eni Miskaven. You're not intending to do the Malacha. And according to Rabshim, and it's Muta. So if so, why are you not allowed to move a lamp when it's on? Says the Gemara, In the event that, should you, for argument's sake, should you be doing it with intention, it's an Issa Do Iraisa, then Kiloi Mechaven, even when you don't have the intention to do the Malacha, Goza Reb Shimon Midrabonon. Reb Shimon makes an Xera that it's also Midrabonon. And therefore, since if you intend to extinguish a lamp, is an Issa Do Iraisa, therefore, you're not allowed to move the lamp because maybe the lamp will get extinguished by mistake. And even though it's a Dovo She'eni Miskaven, but since if it would be this Miskaven, it would be an Issa Deiraisa, Reb Shemin says it's Osa. However, Kol Heichad de Mechimechaven, Ike Isurim Medrabonon, but in a case where even if you have intentions, it's only Osa Medrabonon, for example, if you had intentions to plow the land using a bed, a chair, or a bench, where it's only also drabon on. Why? Because it's not a normal way of plowing. You don't plow with a bench. You plow with, with tools for plowing. So even if you had intentions of plowing, it's only also drabon on. In that case, kiloi mechaven. In the case where you did not even want to intentionally make the ditch, shori reb shimon lekatchila. Over there, reb shimon says it's muta lekatchila. Continues the Gemara. Mosif Rava. Rava is going to ask a question on this. Moichrei ksus. If a person is selling garments and he knows that his garments may have kilayim in it, woolen linen, and you're not allowed to have any benefit from a cloth that has kilayim. But it was typical back in those days for the seller of the garments to wear the garments as advertising. Is he allowed to wear a garment if it has kilayim? So the moichri ksus, moichrin kedarkon, he's, he's allowed to do what all sellers do. He can wear the garments. Will virtually scavin bechamo mipnei chamo, providing that you don't intend to have pleasure from it in the summer to protect you from the sun, or bekshomim mipnei akshomim, and in the rain to protect you from the rain. If you do not have intention to have benefit from the kilaim, it's muta. That's nuin. But those who are very medactic and don't do anything that could even look like an avera, mafshilin b'makir lachiren, they put the garment onto a type of a hanger on a pole and hang it over their backs, and that way they're not actually wearing the garment, and that's a more preferable way of advertising and showing the clothes. V'ha'hocha, asks the Gemara, D'chi m'schavin isura d'rai se'ika. Somebody who wears the clothes with the intentions of having benefit from it and pleasure from it, it's an isura d'rai se'ika. Ki lo'i m'schavin, when he doesn't have attention, intentions to do it, shori reb shimen l'katchila, how can Reb Shimon say that it's Mutalek Atchila to do that? It says that Moichre Ksus, Moichre Kedarkon. Why do we not make a Gzeira? Since if you have pleasure from it, it's an Issa de Raisa. Even if you do not intend to have pleasure from it, it should be also Medra Bonon. Elo Omarova, Rova says that the fact that you could be even Issa de Raisa is not the reason to say that when you don't do it intentionally, it should be also. If so, we're back to our original question, according to Reb Shimon, why are you not allowed to move a lamp when it's lit? So it says, Rav, I'll explain to you why. Hanach l'neir shemen upsila hoil denase bosis ledover ha'osur. Whilst the lamp is lit, then the flame itself is a dover ha'osur. And the lamp is holding, is a boss, is a base, it's holding the flame. <coughs> and since it's holding the flame, you're not allowed to move the flame even via the lamp. That means the reason is not because we're afraid you're going to extinguish the lamp. No, that alone, according to Shimon, if you didn't have intentions to extinguish the lamp, would not be reason to say it's Osa. But since you're carrying the flame and the flame is Mukta, that's why, since it's a bosses, you're not allowed to move the lamp. And the Mirza Shem in the next sugya we we'll learn in the next daf we're going to learn more about a bosses the halachas of something that's holding something that's muktzah.